My name is Mtunzi Sibisi. Welcome to the Yoko Back Your Business Workshop. I am a sound designer within the marketing operations space. And today we will be covering all things Yoko products. Uh, alongside with me here, I have Nza Komkeba and I also have Michael Bauer, who are our product managers. And they will be giving us a live demo. All right. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you just I'm going to take you through a little bit of the rundown of the day. I'm going to give you a little bit of insights as to this uh, back your business back the underdog campaign, and then I'll hand over to our uh, our, our people here on the side to, to to carry on. All right. So um, what will be happening today is um, we will be having uh, this discussion and some demos that will be going on. Uh, some of the some of the house rules that we would like you to be aware of is that um, we do have uh, refreshments uh, outside over there. Uh, here's the Wi-Fi details if you need. Um, bathrooms are in the entrance when you're coming in. All right. And uh, we will also be having a panel discussion where you get to ask questions uh, within after after the talk that we're going to have in the live demo. All right, so um, a little bit about the Back the Underdog campaign. So um, the, the, the idea behind it is that we wanted to, we wanted to pledge our support for small businesses. Um, it's oftentimes we hear and we see adverts out there and stuff like that, but we wanted to, rather than just telling people to do something, we also wanted to be part of it. So this is us pledging uh, our support towards small businesses and uh, encouraging the end users, while Luguti Nina, as a Bantabama customer and so forth, to to, 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 to support your small businesses, that lady selling millies on the side, you know, that uh, the, the, those are the people that are sustaining our economy, you know. So, yeah, uh, without taking too much time, uh, I will hand over to Ntakom Kiba and Michael Power, our product managers, to give us a little bit of a demo and take us through some of our products. Awesome. Thanks. You, you. Thank you so much, Mtunzi. Um, how's everyone doing? Good, good, good. good. You're relaxed? Yeah. I see everyone is like... <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, okay, so before we get into the products, um, I'd just like to do a, a quick poll. Um, I wanna see or gauge the room and see how many people in the room are already merchants, Yoko merchants. So if you're a merchant, please raise your hand. Okay, so, all right, okay. So it's like maybe like a 40, 60 split, 40% split, merchants. Okay, fantastic, that's useful. Um, as Mtunzi said, my name is Nsako, I'm a product manager, and we're really excited today to show off some of our products to you. Um, at Yoko, we pride ourselves on enabling our merchants to get paid quickly and securely. And we do that through a variety of products. And we're gonna share some of those products with you. Um, if you're already a merchant, you know, I want you to, to still pay attention because you, you might learn something new um, and you might see something that you might, might not have ever seen before. Um, so yeah, with that said, I'll hand it over to you to explain what the live demo is gonna be about. Cool, so we're doing this live. This is not uh, pre-recorded. It's because we trust our products. We are 100% sure they're gonna work 100% of the time. But that also means that you're gonna see wires and you're gonna see pages loading and it's, it's real. It's like as if we were doing this in a, in a real context. So bear with us, um, but we're excited to show you basically starting from just taking a very simple transaction on a card machine all the way through to sending someone an online payment link uh, if you sell via social, via Instagram or something like that. We wanna cover all of those bases and, and show you how all of this stuff works. So starting off, we're gonna have to, I'm gonna share this. This is currently wired into my laptop and I'm gonna share it, but what you're gonna be seeing is basically what's on the screen of this card machine. And we're gonna start off by taking a very simple transaction. So if we can ask you to hold that, you're gonna cool. see some uh, wizardry quickly. <laughs> this should hopefully just work. Okay, it's not. That's always good. <laughs> this is, yeah, unplug it and plug it back in. Okay. Uh, while we're still waiting, uh, I would like to know, uh, so we have a certain number of Yoko merchants, but I would like to know how many people uh, who aren't Yoko merchants, but have interacted sure. with Yoko, for example, maybe you work in a shop that uses Yoko, how many people have that product knowledge? Okay, okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, the great thing about a live demo is that mm -hmm. sometimes it doesn't do what you expect it to do. <laughs> there you go, turn that on. Allow, okay, cool. we are, we are in business. Okay, so Sibs, can I share? Okay, we have Fantastic. a card machine. So Nsako, before we take this transaction, do you wanna tell us a little bit about the device that you have in your hand and how it works? Sure. Uh, all right, so this is our Kumo device. Um, 
and it's part of the flagship range. So this device has been specifically designed <coughs> for you know, small business owners that are you know, getting serious about their businesses and they want to take transactions in the fastest time possible. So some of the incredible benefits about this product is that your transaction happens like so quick, almost accidentally. Like <laughs> if someone comes here, you puts the card there in a matter of two seconds, the transaction is complete. It's absolutely incredible. Um, another really interesting uh, fact about this device is that it also has two SIM cards inside of it. Um, one on the Vodacom network, other on the MTN network. So you're always secure knowing that even if you're in a place where the network is bad with one provider, the other one is there. Um, but you also have Wi-Fi as well. So if you operate in an environment where you do have Wi-Fi, then you can also uh, leverage that as well. So yeah, that's pretty much the device. And um, should we make a transaction? Yeah, let's do it. Go for it. Cool. All right, so I'm going to click new sale. If you can watch the screen there, you should see what happens. Cool. So I'm going to go easy on you. Yes. This, is a real, <laughs> this, this is a real transaction. So then, <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Awesome. Cool. Cool. Sorted. So as you guys can see, after the payment has been approved, you can decide how you want to send the receipt to the customer. So on the Kumo, you can either SMS the receipt to them or you can email them um, the receipt, right? But also here on the table, I have another device, which is the older brother of the Kumo, and this is the Kumo print. And pretty much the biggest differentiator between the two is that it actually prints physical receipts. So there are still you know, a portion of businesses that still prefer to have a physical receipt to hand to their customers. And if you're one of them, then this will be the device for you. Uh, and how this screen would look like for the Kumo print is that you'd have a third option that allows you to actually print the physical receipt. And also on the Yoko portal, you can configure the information that goes on the receipt. Cool. Cool, great. Okay, so if you want to go back to the, the home screen, mm -hmm. what we'll do is uh, move on to setting up a product. So I'm going to stop sharing on the Kumo for a second and just show what we call our Yoko portal. So Yoko portal is a website that every single Yoko merchant has access to where you can log in and you can do a whole bunch of things from just tracking your business uh, and, and looking at reporting to tracking your payouts and then also doing some cool, uh, accessing some cool features that actually exist on the Kumo. So let me show you one of those features, which is the ability to sell with products. Okay, cool. So this is the, we, we set up a new business for the purposes of this workshop. So you can see that this is the back your business business um, <laughs> that, that we've set up. So logged in on the Kumo and on portal is the same uh, business. So if you own a Kumo, if you uh, are looking at buying one, you would have access to all of these tools as well. And one of the really cool things that you can do is we made a simple transaction earlier where you just manually input the numbers. So you said four rand, you just put it in and make the payment. But if you're a more complicated business and you've got lots of different products, you might not be able to keep track of that at the point of sale. You're selling things really quickly. You're selling lots of different stuff. You can't remember the prices of things necessarily. So you actually, instead of manually entering stuff, you want to create like a list of products, a catalog of products that you can then like store on the device and access at the point of sale. So maybe is there a, is there a merchant in the room that wants to give me a, an example of a product and we'll set it up and actually put it on the Kumo? Who, who sells something cool? <laughs> socks. socks. Sure, we can, we can do socks. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so let's just call this socks and I also don't want to uh, spend a lot of money, so I'm going to make these socks. <laughs> Let's make them 10 Rand. <laughs> um, so you can set up a whole bunch of different features around how socks are going to actually impact your business. So you could be a VAT registered entity or not. You could have products, certain products that you have to charge VAT on and some that you maybe don't. And you can set that up on a per line item basis so that each of these products is, is handled correctly. I'm going to say no tax. And the description is these are socks. <laughs> the best socks. <laughs> um, Another thing that you can do, which we won't get into now just for the, the purposes of time, but you can also set up the concept of brand and categories. Mm -hmm. So say you were selling shoes and you had 100 shoes in your store, you might want to set up uh, you know, trainers versus sneakers versus flip-flops versus whatever, 
or you might want to set up by brand, like let's have Nike and Adidas and whatever in, in different categories. So you can set up a bunch of different ways to like manage your store and, and make sure that your business is running smoothly. For this purpose, I'm just going to go pretty, pretty simple. Um, let's choose a little blue color. You can also have stock tracking uh, when you set up a, a product catalog. So you can uh, generate an SKU, which allows you to just keep track of how much inventory you have. So if you only have 100 stocks, every time you, uh, 100 socks, sorry, <laughs> every time you sell a sock with your Kumo, it'll go and actually uh, take away from your inventory. So you can, you can actually keep track of how much uh, stock you have. Mm. Cool, but for now, we're just gonna keep it a little bit simple. So we're gonna go add. And you can see that we now have socks available. Awesome. Now, if I stop sharing here and go back to the Kumo, cool. Saco, do you want to turn on products and then awesome. sell me a sock? <laughs> so from, from the home screen, if you want to actually enable products, you'd have to go to tools, then you can manage. One, two, three, four. Back your business. Oh, okay, the possible. All lowercase. Back, back your business. Everyone can hack us now. <laughs> <laughs> Back. <laughs> yeah, for the four <laughs> round, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, business. Cool. Awesome. So, we're going to enable products. Cool. And then, cool. do you want to go back and <coughs> make a sale? Awesome. So, now let's go back. So, now, whenever I want to make a new sale, as, you're gonna, as you can see, the SOX product is now available at the point of sale. Cool. So, maybe you can also manually enter in still. So if you hit the little keypad yeah. in the bottom left, yeah. you can go and make a sale like you would normally if it's a random product or you, you're just you know, charging something different. But you will also have a list of all of your products available yeah. to you. Cool. So let's go back and select socks. And as you can see, there's an item that's been added to the, the button at the bottom. And then we're going to charge 10 Rand. All right. Cool. Go for it. Great. Processing payment. Payment approved. Done. Awesome. I'm the proud owner of some socks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike, why don't you show them about the staff? Cool. So one extra layer of complexity, and I'm just going to go back to portal. So we've spoken about products and, and how that can help your business and, and keep it kind of uh, streamlined at the point of sale. But let's say you have a business that has multiple staff members. Maybe you own a restaurant or maybe a coffee shop or even just a store that sells socks, but you have multiple different uh, salespeople on the floor. Uh, you might want to link a transaction to one of those people in, in your business. Mm. Um, so you can go back to portal and you can create staff. So every business will always have at least one staff member. In this case, it's me because um, I created this business. So you will always have one staff member who is sort of the administrator of the business. But I can go ahead and invite a new staff member and I'm going to just go in cycle. You, uh, I hope you make me a manager. No <laughs> worries. <laughs> I'm actually just going to use my own email address for this one. Uh, plus test staff .com. Cool. And I'm going to make Encycle just a staff member, and I'm going to set, <laughs> <laughs> set up a pin for him, which is just one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. I'm going to hit save, and then I'm going to invite him to join my business. Cool. So now Encycle is an employee of my business, and he has a dedicated pin number that he can use to log into his profile on the Kumo. So we're going to make Sell me some socks again, but this cool. time sell it under your uh, profile. So let me go back to the Kumo. All right. These are going to be happy socks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'll go easy on you again. Okay, cool. So we, once again, we're going to go to tools because we have to first enable staff. Okay. So you have to put in the password. Let me just see if my spelling didn't let me down. Cool. <laughs> Fantastic. So we're going to enable the second option, which is staff switching. Great. So it's been enabled. So now I'm going to navigate back home. And now you can see there's a, an additional user there. 
just above the new sale option. So if I click that, you can now see a list of the staff that you have under your business. So I'll click on my own profile and the pin we said was one, two, three, four. Once I continue, there you go. So you can now see that I'm the active staff member who's about to receive this transaction. So we can go new sale, click on socks once again. And now we can run the transaction. Cool. I owe you 24 Rand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. There you go. Cool. So do you want to go into the sales history uh, tab and talk a little bit about what's going on in there? Awesome. So you can click on history at the bottom options and there you'll, you'll see a, a list of all the different transactions that have taken place. So it's just a nice, easy way for you to actually track that. And you can also see who performed which transaction. So as you can see on this list, you can only see one transaction, which is the one that we've just done. And that's because Insako is currently logged in as his profile. So these are the ones under me. And he's only a staff member, not an administrator. So you might be in a business where you have people working kind of on the, the sales floor, but you don't necessarily want them to see every single transaction that your business makes. So you limit it to say, cool, these are your transactions. But if you log out at the top right, you go, oh, oh yeah, or oh, you can do it this way. If you go back into back your business, you'll have to enter the password again. And in, in your businesses, obviously this would be your password and, and your profile, you would. Cool. cool, so now if you go to the sales history, we will be able to see all of the transactions that we have made thus far. Do you want to just click into one of those transactions? All right, sure. Cool, so here you can see a little bit more detail about what the transaction was, when it was made, who made it, in this case it was in Sako, uh, what that transaction was, like what was in the list, so it was just one pair of socks in this case, but obviously if you had a more complicated business, it would list everything there. Um, and then you can take two actions. You can resend a receipt, so if, even if you don't have a printed receipt, you can always send one to yourself or to the customer if they ask for one. Um, so it's, it's really easy to uh, go back and, and kind of keep track of, of these transactions. And then if you need to refund a transaction as well, you can do so by clicking that button up there. Um, we won't do a refund now because these are actually uh, test transactions, so the money's coming back to me anyway. Um, <laughs> but in a real life situation, you would be able to hit refund and, and it would automatically kind of charge back that card. So if someone comes and returns these socks, you can, you can charge it back. Awesome. Great. Cool, is there anything else on the Kuma that we wanna talk about? We can maybe uh, just touch very briefly on help and support. Um, um, yeah, sure. So if you can see, there's an option on the top right called help. So when you click on it, you can see some articles that we have there um, that are there to assist you with any sort of issues that you might be having. Um, so you can just browse through those, Kumo user guide. If, maybe if you're having issues at the point of transaction, you can come to Kumo troubleshooting, and then um, the various articles are going to load. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just takes a bit of time. <laughs> Scroll down a little bit, see if it's... Okay, for the yeah. purposes of time, let's come back to this. Yeah. All right, awesome. So we're but not currently, this, this particular device is not actually on the Wi-Fi, it's using MTN at the moment, so loading that, that article has taken a little bit of time. Yeah, but, but if you don't want to read right. an article, you can always chat to support, so there's an option there at the bottom as well to chat to support. Cool. Cool, let's show them some of the online products. Okay, so do you want to jump onto your phone yeah. for, for this part? So Yoko is not only, not everyone has access to a, a laptop necessarily and, and access to that portal website. We also have an app that you can download on your phone and Insako is going to show you what that looks like now. 
And the great thing about the app, you can do everything that we just did on the portal. So setting up products, setting up staff, looking at your transaction history, all of that stuff you can do in the portal. You can also do it in the app. Um, and you can do more than just set up products and staff as well. You can also take uh, advantage of our online payments products. So we've got a couple of online payments products. One is called Payment Link, one is called Payment Page, and then we've got an invoices product, all of which are, don't need a card machine. You can just, all you need is a phone or, or a laptop and you can get paid. So if you're selling via Instagram or you're selling just anywhere really, you can send people uh, a payment link and, and you can get paid pretty quickly. Uh, so Encycle is going to yeah, show you how to set that up now. Let me take you through it. So as Mike just mentioned, <coughs> everything we've just showed you, you can do it either on the portal or on the app. Um, so just to prove it to you, if you can just have a look at the Manage My Store, you can see products and the very same products that we loaded onto the portal and are now on the device are also on my app. Um, same applies for staff and everything else that we've done. But now let's jump into the online products, the payment link. So this thing has saved my life. I am, I am a merchant as well. And this has come so handy in those moments where somebody can't physically get to me and make the payment. And I can just send the link to them. Cool. So there are three simple fields that you need to fill in when you're sending a link. Right? The first one is what's the customer's name? What is the amount that you want them to pay? And then you can select the product that you want them to pay for. Cool. So I'll say Mike. Um, 10 Rand. So you see, when I enter the amount, it removes the, the products list. But I could equally just press the product and then the amount would be there by default based on how we set it on portal. Does that make sense? Yes. Fantastic. Cool. So I create link. So you can see, that's a preview of how the link will look. And it's asking me for, like, where do I want to share it um, so that Mike actually receives it. I can either send it to him on WhatsApp, email, SMS, um, or I could just copy a link to the why link. Why don't you just copy the link and open it in your browser if you... Okay, cool. Awesome. So let's go ahead. Paste. Cool. And there so that's it is. how it's going to look like when the person opens the link. So if you WhatsApp that to any of your customers or SMS it or emailed it, there's a whole bunch of different options on how to share it. They would get this link and then if you hit pay now, mm -hmm. they would be shown a screen where they can enter in their card details uh, and then pay it. And it's very safe, very secure. Uh, there's nothing to... Uh, awesome. The cool thing about this is that if your customer doesn't have a card, you can also use EFT uh, at the bottom. So. If you're maybe doing a bigger transaction and someone is not really uh, keen to use their card for that, or maybe they're nervous about entering their card details in an online place, there is also a way to just uh, connect to your bank and uh, EFT directly from your, your bank account from there. Awesome. Great. So let's go back. Cool. So besides creating payment links, you can also set up invoices that you can send to your customers. All right. So I'll show you how you do that. So let's click on invoices. All right, cool. So we, d we currently don't have any invoices, so we'll create the first one. So there are a few fields that you have to enter when you're creating an invoice. I think you're going to have to create me as a customer first. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. That's so fine. I first have to add a customer. Company name, um, what should we call it, test? Sure. Full name, Mike. Phone number. Okay, yeah. maybe we'll skip that for now. Yeah, I can just go. Well, you can skip all those fields, to be honest. But okay, it looks like it's required. I'll just put my own number. Cool. Email. Um, which email should I use? Uh, I think with just the phone number will we'll work. All right, should work. Cool. Awesome. So let's save that. Saved. So I've added a customer that I can now add onto the invoice. Okay. So now when I'm selecting a customer. You can see that he's already showing up under this invoice. So I've added him. And now I have to select the products that he wants to actually purchase for me. So there's the socks once again. And now, as you can see, you can actually select the number of days that you want the invoice to be uh, payable on so, or due. So here we're going to leave it at due in seven days. 
And then if I wanted to, I could also add a note. Maybe I would add any terms um, that I have or conditions that I have. Or just it. say thank you. Or just say thank <laughs> you, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Cool. You should get a preview of what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. So as you can see, there's a preview of the invoice. It looks very professional. You know, like <coughs> portrays your business in a really professional light. And then you can either email that or you can SMS it to someone. Cool. So, yeah, maybe... Um, who, who wants to receive the email? <laughs> 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 send a chat and I'll open, send a chat and I'll open it on <laughs> go, go michael.bow at yoko.com okay michael oh michael.bow at yoko don't worry guys I wasn't going to expect you to pay for it <laughs> <laughs> okay awesome. done send. so let me Cool, let me share my screen here. Mm -hmm. So I'll stop sharing my screen and you can share yours. Cool, you can see that it just arrived. Here is the invoice from Back Your Business, 10 Rand. If I go pay now, it will take me to... Internet is being a bit slow, there you go. You can see the actual invoice. I can download a PDF of that for my records, and if I hit pay now, it'll give me the same uh, payment options as payment link to actually pay and clear this. Cool, awesome. So that's not every product that Yoko offers. Uh, there are other products like Capital, where you can access uh, working capital for your business. Um, there is uh, a bunch of more other reporting features. You can look into kind of stock management and different kinds of like sales reporting over time. Um, but for now, I think we uh, have covered kind of the, what it takes to get a card machine in your hands and get paid as quickly as possible, no matter where you are, from taking a simple transaction to a little bit more complicated and even if you have staff. Um, yeah, and we're always looking for feedback. We're always keen to hear your ideas and, and what else you, you're looking for in your business. Um, so yeah, very keen to learn more and, and take it from there. Awesome. Yeah, thank you guys. That was very cool, eh? Um, thank you for taking us through that demo. Um, one thing that stood out to me is that like, it's, it's so great having such a multifaceted product where you can take card payments, whether, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't limit you to being local. You could also be overseas and still be taking payments through the payment link and stuff like that. So that's really cool. Um, guys, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a 15 minute recess. And then when we come back, we are going to have a Q&A mm. where you'll be able to ask all your questions. So keep those questions. And yeah, see you in 15 minutes. Cool. Awesome. Thanks. Hello and welcome back, everybody. Um, to those that are just joining us, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, so now what we're going to have is a Q&A session where you'll get a chance to ask any questions that you have. Uh, we have one mic that will be available for that. So what's going to happen is you can just raise your hand. Uh, we'll point to you. You get up, um, you ask your question, and then we'll, get, we'll have that question answered for you. We are also joined by Unompi Lozondi, who is our customer support representative, and she'll be helping us tackle some of these questions. Um, yeah, and also there will be, um, after, after the questions, uh, we will be having, we will, be, we will remain here up until one o'clock where we'll be free to chat, uh, any conversations, any one-on-one -on -one you want to have, anything you want to ask about, over and above this, you'll be able to, right? Right. So, yeah, um, our lady over there with the cup, I think you had a question, eh? so you can open it for us. Okay. <laughs> they don't cater for us. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. So morning. my first question was about the fee charged on the online payments. Is it mm. the same as when people tap or is it different? And then the second question was about the reports that you mentioned um, after a sale is made. So the reports that are available online. I just wanted more clarity on what those look like. And if... If, okay, then my question, my other question depended on that answer. So, <laughs> thanks. Sure. Can I take it? Yeah, sure. So, on 
may, maybe stay there if, in case you have the follow-up question. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just, just in case. Sure. <laughs> Sorry, it's, Thank you. it's very formal. It's like you're talking at Parliament or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on the fee, it, so we have a sliding scale that ranges between uh, 2.6 and 2.95 uh, as, as Yoko's fee that's applied to the transactions. Um, <clears throat> online tra transactions can have a higher fee in, in some instances. It depends on, on many things, uh, like the, the card that the person is using to, to pay uh, with. But yeah, it's, it's a sliding scale that moves based on your volume. So the more transactions that you are doing, uh, the lower your fee will be um, as, you, as you go. Cool. And then your second question was about reporting. Yes. Can you just repeat that question? Sorry. Okay. So, yeah. like you said, um, there's a there's an option available for you to see your sales reports. So I yes. just wanted some certainty in terms of what those are. So, do you get like a profit and loss sort of a thing, or is it like a just your sales for the month only? <laughs> sure. So, so you get some basic reporting in Portal that shows you, uh, you know, how just money that's gone through the system as well as like number of products that you sold and who sold those products you can look into kind of you know did in cycle as a staff member of my business have like a really big day where he sold a uh, kind of a number of products but you can also export all of that information from the system if you want to put it into your own reporting in some way you can get all that stuff and then build your own kind of analysis from there all right perfect thank cool. you cool sure cool mm. That's too low. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> so I think the question I have is in regards to the refund, mm. right? What's the turnaround time for a refund? Is it dependent on the type of card you used? Is it dependent on the whatever you're banking with? Is it FNB, APSA, whatever? What is it dependent on? Because when you saying to somebody, somebody wants a refund, you need to be able to let them know how long it will take for them to receive their money back. Uh, okay, so with regards to refunds, um, the Yoko system can refund credit card payments only. So if it's a debit card, um, it's going to come up with an error to say that you cannot complete the refund. Um, you can budget for about seven working days. So just let the customer know that they should have the money back in their account within seven working days. But the most important thing to remember is as a transaction, a transacting merchant, you need to make sure that there's money in that um, that you're transacting to support the refund. So, for example, let's say you sold a hundred rand today, right? <coughs> it gets paid out tomorrow, so you don't have that money to refund the client if they come back to you on Saturday and say, "I want a refund." If you haven't transacted, you don't physically have the money to refund them back because we have paid you out that money. So basically, you will have to swipe an amount of 100 Rand or more into the Yoko system to make sure that you start off that refund. So until you actually do the transaction to support that refund, it's not going to go through. Only when you've swiped for that amount, that can actually make sure that the refund goes through. So then you start from that time, that seven working days again for the, um, for the amount to get back into the client's um, card. Is that clear? In terms of, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So with the debit cards, is mm. it is it smarter having cash on hand? I would say um, maybe do an EFT. I would I would always advise merchants okay. to do an EFT uh, refund if you are doing debit card payment. Okay. But yeah, the system is very easy and it's gonna tell you if it's a debit card or if the refund has gone through. But just note that if it, still, if it says pending, then it's still pending. And then if it says approved, then everything has and gone if through. if it says cancelled? Uh, or what? What so does it you say will, when it's not going through? So it will say pending. Until you have the funds to support the refund, it will say pending. Okay. Um, when it's gone through, then it's going to say approved. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, just to make sure I'm understanding correctly, Nombilo, so what mm -hmm. you're saying is that, right, so... Um, if I did a hundred rand transaction on Monday, right? Yes. Um, uh, I have to refund that before that money is paid out to me because okay. if there's no money to pay out to me, 
it will be on pending up until I transact so that yes. there is money to refund the customer. That's correct. Okay. Yes. Oh, so, so, sorry, sorry. Uh, well, uh, the, there's a guy who had a question here. After that, we can see. Uh, my <laughs> name is uh, Micah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I liked uh, the presentation uh, when you were showing us the invoice and how to set up uh, the invoice. So uh, I had a question here yeah, and I discussed it with other people trying to get to know if they know, but they didn't know. So my question to you is, can I still use that app even if I am not a Yoko merchant? And uh, other question is, what's the name of that app? I know that um, us as Yoko advocates, we have a Yoko studio that we use, uh, Advocate Hub that we use. Mm. So what's the name of that app? And yeah, other question. Cool. So. So it's different to the Yoko Studio app. You can, in the App Store on Android or on iOS, uh, you can download, it's called the Yoko app. So if you search for the main Yoko app, uh, you can download uh, that app onto your phone. Create a merchant account, uh, get yourself onboarded, which maybe Nompilo can talk a little bit about. And then yeah. from there, you can basically start using those invoices immediately and, and sending them out. So you don't need to own a card oh, machine yeah. to use that. Oh, you, can just, okay. you can download the app straight onto your phone and, and start going straight away. That's great. It seems like I took one for the team. <laughs> 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 so, 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 Michael, uh, with that, what you're saying is that um, you can oh, you, you you can download the app and you can use it without the the the, the, the card machine, but you do need to register your core profile first. So you have yes. to be a Yoko merchant. Yeah. yeah. So you'll have to sign up, which you can do on the app. You can sign up, create your accounts, upload all of your documents and everything, get yourself onboarded, uh, link your bank account so that you get paid out into your bank account. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, yeah, start using it. Are there any fees associated with that? The, the fees for the invoices, it's free to send the invoice and, and to use it is free. The fees for the actual transaction when it gets paid will be the same as any other online transactions, so the same as payment link or, or wherever it will be the same. But sign up is free? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm PM. So I have a question with regards to sending out the Yoko payment link. Um, so I've sent links to clients um, in and around SADAC. So I do have international shipping through Ukpatsi Sabantu. Um, so I experienced in the past where my friend tried to do the payment. So Ukpatsi says, like, I give it to someone and they hand it over to the next person. So the person tried to pay, but because she was using uh, Botswana FMB, um, it actually didn't go through. It, the, the transaction cancelled or wasn't authorized but i do know that if she taps her card it does work so how does it work if you want to send a link um to a non-south african bank account like you're saying because it can't come to me uh so just check with your bank because usually that is what the issue is um the first thing is our system takes 3d secured cards only okay. so if your card is not 3d secured meaning that um you have to have an otp from your bank before doing the transaction, or you know when FNB says approve on the mm -hmm. app. So basically it needs to be enabled to do that. Um, so I think that may be one of the things that um, your customer may need to do, is just check that it is um, 3D secure. Okay. Um, the other thing I would say is also maybe authorization, right? Between inter-country transaction. So maybe their bank has not allowed them to do transactions in South Africa. So the the, the, the transaction will be flagged as like suspicious in a mm. way. Um, but they just need to talk to their bank and say, hey, this is the transaction that I'm trying to put through. And it is for a South African based company. Can you authorize? Okay. And that should go through. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Okay. There was a question on this side. Okay. Okay, I'll come to you afterwards. So Hi. my question, I'm Sia, by the way. Hi, Sia. Um, my question is with regards to the invoices, right? Um, so I wanted to ask, um, are you able to check if the customer has opened the invoice? Because you know, 
get people that say, no, I didn't get it, whereas you have sent it. <laughs> <laughs> and then secondly, um, I saw that when you were setting it up, you said seven days, right? Yeah. So when that seven days has lapsed, um, is, it, is there an option where you can resend or send a reminder to the customer? Yeah, so, so you can definitely resend, and that seven days is also not, uh, it's, it's more to populate the kind of due date on the actual uh, invoice, invoice itself. So when they read it, it'll say, please pay by X date. Um, you, you can, they can still pay that invoice past that date, yes. um, and, or you can resend. And you, there's, there's a list of, of invoices that you can delete and kind of resend and track the progress of. As far as I know at the moment, I'm not 100% sure about this, but as far as I know, we don't have reporting on when someone actually opens the invoice and views it for the first time. Um, because it's, uh, it could be a PDF that you like, you know, manually print out and give to someone. It's not always necessarily a link or, or an email. Um, so, so that tracking is not there yet, but that is an interesting uh, feature request. That's something that it would be interesting to, to talk about. Cool. Hello. Um, I wanted to ask with the, uh, when creating an invoice, um, can you add your business logo on your, your invoice? Okay. And then question two, when it comes to maybe adding a client before, can you maybe go back and like edit the details if you've uh, added them oh, before? Yeah. Okay. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So there, there's a number of uh, fields that you can use to populate your invoice, like uploading your logo and some information about your business, your address, all of that kind of stuff. Um, if there is something missing from that or something that you think is very important to your business, maybe there's some kind of messaging or something, all of these features are possible um, and it's, we, we can build stuff. You know, um, That's the, the beauty of, of the product. Uh, so yeah, open to, to hearing thoughts and opinions and, and what your business needs, basically. Mm. All right, do I have any more questions? Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, everyone. Morning. Good morning. morning. Uh, my name is Murang Adzibani. So I just wanted to ask, uh, in terms of cash sales, uh, is there a way to record uh, cash sales on, on the device? So, so the, the, the quick answer to the question is yes, you can. Um, yeah, and then you can just, whatever sales you have, you can, that are outside of the Yoko universe, cash is an example, then at the end of the day, you can reconcile the Yoko plus the cash sales and you'll be able to see the history of all the sales yeah. that went through. In, in the app, you can uh, create custom payment methods. So that could be cash, but it could also be something like Zappa or... Yeah. Snap scan or anything, you know, whatever, whatever people are using to pay you with, you can create that as a custom payment method. And then at the point of sale, you can record that in your app um, to, to create. Mm. To That's, activate that, so you yeah. actually can call through to support. We will have to send you an update. So just make sure that your machine is linked to the Wi-Fi because that's the only way that we can send you the update. Uh, once we've sent you the update, you can just restart your machine and then on tools, um, you can also get it uh, under the tools as custom payment method. So that's for if you have one of these devices, you'll, you'll need to go through that flow to get it on the device. Mm -hmm. But on the app, on your phone, you can do that straight that. away. Yeah, you'll be able to record. Um, I have one last question. Um, so when you were doing the demo for like adding um, an employee, right? Mm -hmm. And then a business has one device, one Yoko device. Are they able to have the app and then obviously use their profile using the PIN? Yes, they are. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you can, if you have an app and like a Go or a Pro yeah. that you are linking to your card machine, yes, you can. So every, every employee in the business can have the app and use their profile to take the sale? Have any more questions? I wanted to ask you guys a question. <laughs> <laughs> um, roughly, what's the difference between the payment link and the payment page? So, I mean, it's almost the same product. Uh, a payment link is just when you have a specific amount in mind or a specific set of products. So say you buy three pairs of socks from me, 
I create a payment link that is only for that transaction. So it's only for three pairs of socks, it's 30 Rand, I send it to you, pay me 30 Rand and we're done. A payment page is something that lives uh, for a long period of time. So it doesn't have a list of products and it doesn't have a set amount on it. It's more just if I see you at the market and I say, oh, you need to, you owe me 60 Rand. I can send you the link to my payment page. It'll bring up the page and it'll have a form there where you can enter the amount that you want to pay me. You can put 60 Rand into that, pay it, and then I'll get a notification saying, Mtunzi has just paid you 60 Rand through your page. So the page is more just for kind of any use case. It's for, it, it, it's the same link. It lives there all the time. You can also style it to f- match your business. So you can have your logo and, and some information about your business. Um, and you can receive any amount of money that people need to send you. Whereas a link is only for like one specific transaction. It's for this, yeah. And I think another use case that I'd add to that is that have you guys ever seen some of those like websites where you can actually pick how much you want to pay? Mm. Have you ever seen that? Some people like offer services. Yeah, donations is an example mm. where the amount is completely up to your discretion. So the link tells you, you, you get to set the amount and that person has to pay that amount. But in the page, it's up to the... It's, it's similar. It's similar. To that. Yeah, it's it can similar, function yeah. in a similar way. Yeah. Just to expand on that, expand on that. So, like for example, this is so the payment page essentially is a link that I can maybe like keep on my social media, mm-hmm. and it can live there. And then maybe let's say like maybe on my Twitter, I've got a price list of services I offer, mm-hmm. and then a person can just put in what they want and then put in the amount, and then mm-hmm. exactly. Oh, and, yeah. and 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 um, the the payment link compared to that, uh, are they do they last forever? The payment link can last forever, but it will only be for one transaction. So. If, if you owed me 60 Rand and I sent you a link for 60 Rand, that will stay there until you pay that, that link. But you can't, I can't visit that link and pay you 80 Rand instead. Mm-hmm. You would have to send me a new link for that, that new 80 Rand transaction. So that's where the payment page comes yeah, in. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Payment pages, as you say, if you on Instagram, you've got a list of, of services and someone DMs you and says, how much do I owe you? You could just say, go to my payment page, pay me 300 Rand, they go pay it, and when you get notification, then you can ship the product or you know whatever the the thing is. Yeah. It's a good example. Yeah. I have an online store. I'm not lying now. I have an online store and would like to know if I can use Yoko also to put it on my Shopify or my WooCommerce and where would I find that as well? Sure. Yeah, so I actually also run a, an online store and I've been able to integrate to the Yoko plugin uh, through Shopify. So this is a, a, a nice way to actually ac- like accept payments in a very professional way through like an e-commerce checkout flow. Um, the integration process is a little bit more involved, but we have really great documentation that assists you. Actually doing it is not that bad, it's not that difficult. And I think the documentation will guide you all the way through. Um, but if ever you do get stuck, you can always call into support and they'll be able to help you. But yeah, it is, we, we do enable that and um, I, it works really well. And we support at the moment, if I remember correctly, I wasn't prepared for this question. Shopify, Wix, WooCommerce. WooCommerce as well. Shopstop. Yeah, and the, the great thing I think about that is if you have a physical store with a, a Kumo or card machine and then an online store, that money is going into the same account mm-hmm. in the same place and you can keep track of everything in one place. Yeah. Um, so with regards to something like Black Friday, so I hosted my first Black Friday now in November and um, I ha- so I was sending out payment links and I specifically had to like inform clients that the link would expire at midnight. But I'm aware that your links don't expire at a certain time. So is that something that you guys will um, like do in the near future? To implement like a, an expiry date yes. on the link? Yes, for something like a Black Friday where it's only for a certain period. Right, I see, oh, I see. Yes. Okay, so past that period. Oh. Yes, and then that the discount no longer. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, that's a really interesting, you've got... Product feature. Yeah. So that's yeah. yeah that's like idea. something. Yeah. 
yeah. that yeah would be really cool. Mm. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, but good job for creating that sense of urgency to get them to pay. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, um, any more questions? No. Okay, if there aren't any more questions, um, drinks and, ref uh, drinks and uh, little snacks are outside. Uh, feel free to grab some. We, are, we will be here up until 1, 1 p.m., so let's socialize.